Hey, it's John Lee Dumas of EO Fire, and it's The Entrepreneurial You, the show for dedicated and passionate Caribbean entrepreneurs seeking daily inspiration, brought to you by author, speaker, and award-winning entrepreneur, Henneka Wakis porter You must be prepared to ignite. We needed to raise capital, but our experience with local financial institutions was that they were cautious and slow to act and interest rates were far too high. We had real concerns about financing our business through outside equity investors and the possibility of interference. Could we get a fair valuation for our business? We had our own ideas about the business and its value. Should I go the traditional route of bank financing or should I try the Jamaica Stock Exchange? So we made a call and experienced transformation of our business through conversations. I'm John Mafood, CEO of Jamaican Teas, and we're listed on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. Give us a call today at 876-967-3271 to begin your transformation through conversation. We want to see your company listed on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. Coming up on this episode of The Entrepreneurial You. I was looking at houses online, and I noticed that some houses had a really good photo as the front photo, and I found myself clicking on those. And I noticed that you know some of them didn't have it. Um, so as soon as I noticed that some of them did, I said, "Well, there might there might be a market for this." So I, I did some research and I found out that there was a market for it. You know, I was surprised at the amount of houses that didn't have professional photography taken of them, seeing as it's the most expensive asset that people sell in their lifetimes. Um, so you would think that visual marketing would be you know, a necessity for for everybody. So that's sort of what triggered it for me. Greetings, 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 my peak performer community. How are you doing? Welcome to episode 132 of the Entrepreneurial You podcast. I'm Henneke Watkins Porter. Today's episode is with Evan Roberts. Evan is CEO and founder of Visually Sold, and that's a US-based real estate photography company. And I'm really looking forward to this conversation that is going to be centered around building a real estate photography business from scratch, from the ground up, from the very beginning, right? So with this, I say, welcome, Evan. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Awesome. It's my pleasure indeed. When you hear the word Jamaica, what kind of an emotion does that evoke? Oh, kind of a warm emotion. Ah, (laughs) I like it. I like it. Um, Is there sunshine? Is there people? Have you ever been? I've never been. No. Oh, okay. I'd love to go. Yeah, you should fix that. We should fix that, right? I Let's keep, do it. I keep telling all my all my guests that we need to, you know, those that have not been, you, know, you need to fix it. Like it's a cardinal sin, you know. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I, I right. love. It. Oh, Absolutely, great. yes. Maybe you know, we never know. We can connect after and see what happens. So, I want us to talk from the beginning, where my community get to know you a bit better, right? From what I've read in the intro, what I've said in the intro. So what are some of your favorite thing to do? Some of my favorite things to do um, outside of what I do as a profession. um, I love my job. I love leading people. I love building a company. I love the creativity of it. Outside of that, I would say some of my favorite things to do um, would be mountain biking. Um, I enjoy rock climbing as well. Um, I take a jujitsu class, which I enjoy very much. And um, other than that, just, um, just, Lazy Sundays with my girlfriend are, are pretty great too. Oh, awesome. So you're an outdoorsy person. You like to relax and, and enjoy life, right? Sounds really Absolutely. good. <laughs> All right. And no wonder, because usually persons who are into photography, I find that they do have that kind of a, um, you know, laid back. They're very passionate about what they do, but yet there is this kind of a, a place and space where they get in touch with nature and get in touch with their inner selves. So when did you discover the need for uh, professional photography as it relates to real estate? 
Well, I was looking at houses online and I noticed that some houses had a really good photo as the front photo. And I found myself clicking on those. And I noticed that, you know, some of them didn't have it. Um, so as soon as I noticed that some of them did, I said, well, there might, there might as well, you know, there might be a market for this. So I, I did some research and I found out that there was a market for it. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I was surprised at the amount of houses that didn't have professional photography taken of them, seeing as it's the most expensive asset that people sell in their lifetimes. Um, so you would think that visual marketing would be, you know, a necessity for, for everybody. Um, so that's sort of what triggered it for me. Mm -hmm. And so when exactly did you get started with visually sold? So I started visually sold a little over three years ago, three and some change, not quite three and a half. So May of 2016. Ah, uh, and since then, what has that journey been like for you, Evan? <laughs> I tell people all the time, it's the most rewarding and terrifying thing I've ever done in my life. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's, it's, it's highly enjoyable. Um, it, it's been a, it's been a learning experience and I'm still learning every day, of course, um, learning to lead, learning to build. And, and um, it's, you know, we, we've evolved a lot. We've grown a lot over the past three and a half years. We're a team of 30 now. Um, and we cover three different states. We cover Georgia, North Carolina, and Tennessee in the U.S. Um, and yeah, it's just a huge, huge learning experience. Every day, every day is a blessing. Mm -hmm. So you talked about, you know, of course, it's rewarding, but it's also very scary, too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, talk to us about the scary parts, you know, the scary movie. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. So I won't, it's not, it's nothing like a Saw horror movie or anything like that. There's no obvious, obvious uh, jump scares or anything like that. that <laughs> day to day. Um, but it's, I think it's more of a fear of the unknown and a fear of not knowing what you don't know. So to overcome that, I think it's just to, to understand that you're always learning and that mm -hmm. you're not expected to know everything. And then if you don't know everything, somebody else knows what you don't know. And somebody else, you know, of course, you could hire if you're the boss or if, you know, you could learn from somebody else. But um, just to not and especially not to be afraid of failure. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, if you do fail or if you. You know, I personally don't think that failure is or at least what people think of failure really exists. I think failure is more of an opportunity than what people label failure to be. Right. Um, because failure is, is you know, oh, I, I didn't get that job. Well, that just created the opportunity for me to do something else or that, you know, I needed to be in that, you know, that needed to happen at that time in my life. Um, in order for me to do X and Y or that wasn't right for my journey at the time. Right. So I think just you know, it, it is scary. Um, the, the thought of failure or the thought of, you know, having to make payroll or whatever it is, just the daily, um, woes of running a business. But, um, I think, you know, everything is there as a part of your journey. Everything is there to guide you and show you, um, who you are and, and who you're becoming. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think just, just the typical, just the typical, of course, finances and, and competitors and, and, you know, daily employee, um, in a relationship issues, you know, it's all, it's all there. Um, but it's all worth it. Evan, you said something and it, it jumped out of me and, it, uh, jumped out at me rather. And perhaps it's because I'm writing a piece for the leader cast blog right now, all about vulnerability. And what you talked about was you don't always know, right? And mm -hmm. so as a leader, talk to me about that feeling of vulnerability when you don't always know and you have to go for help. How does that feel? You know, is it something that personally for you, you struggle with? Like, I know many persons struggle with that because you are supposed to know you are the boss, right? <laughs> right. right. I think ego plays a big part in that, right? I think um, at least, you know, you expect yourself to know. And, and for me personally, I know that I've, I've struggled with being okay with um, help or with, you know, not knowing I've struggled with, with not knowing or, or, um, being vulnerable enough to go to somebody for guidance or for help. I think it's a pride thing. And like I said, I think it, it comes from an ego thing. You know, you have to, you have to do that. And you know, you're not, you, you don't know everything. And as soon as you can drop the ego, as soon as you can drop 
the idea that you have in your mind of that, as soon as you can take the label off of it and just be vulnerable and, and say, okay, here, here's where I am. I'm, I'm in this moment. I don't know this thing or I need help with this thing. I, I want to continue doing what I'm doing and I need to know this thing to continue. So, you know, am I doing this to feed my ego? Am I doing this to feed myself? Or am I doing this to grow something that's greater than myself? And in which case, can I use something or can I ask for help um, in order to sustain that? Right. Um, so I think it's 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 a matter of of putting it outside of yourself a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I mean, in my own conclusion of the matter, vulnerability is strength, you know, contrary to mm -hmm. popular belief that, you know, you're weak because you ask for help or you reach out. Vulnerability is strength. And when when you're able to be vul vulnerable, then persons know that they can trust you because then they be begin to connect with you more. Absolutely. Right. It's, it's an authenticity thing as well. So you also talked about in, you know, in, in, in part of your earlier response to me, you mentioned something about who you are and who you are becoming. And this also stood out because I am actually going through a phase and I've been going through many different phases where I like I'm questioning who am I really because I'm finding that I'm personally changing so much. Like my seasons are changing so much, so rapidly, so quickly. Like I feel like this constant caterpillar who is pushing through to be the butterfly. And as soon as you become a butterfly in an area, you realize that, oh my gosh, you, you're now a caterpillar again because you're going through and the metamorphosis never, ever ends. Now, talk to me about that experience of change that as a leader, as you develop this, this business, um, visually sold what has been that experience like for you <laughs> it's an ongoing experience i i relate to that and i resonate with that completely um i think i've been going through my own internal struggles um with that who am i you know why am i doing this am i meant to be doing this the key there is to realize that you are right now you are this moment you are the person that you are now the past is just a story that you tell yourself right? The past is not real right now. So mm. whoever you are right now, that is who you're meant to be, right? And so you just take each moment one at a time and be the best, that, the best version of yourself that you know, or at least the most true version of yourself that you know in that moment, right? And fully accept that. And anything that you're looking for, anything that you're, you know, striving to do will sort of show itself to you when, when it's ready to, as long as you accept who you are in any given moment, mm -hmm. what you're striving to do will sort of show itself. It's like, okay, so you accept yourself now. I, I'm going to show myself now to you because this is the right moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's not to say, you know, sit back and relax and wait for things to happen for you. That's, that's be the best version of be, do what you think is right in any given moment. And, and, and I think, um, I think that's helped me a lot. At least that mentality has helped me a lot. You know what? This is like almost I'm getting, you know, very philosophical right now. But as you mentioned that, I could think about uh, the quote. I think it, I don't know if it's um, Confucius or whoever said it, that when the student is ready, the teacher is appear, will appear. But yeah. um, for me, like, though I understand that in context, I also and, and I declare without you know hesitation, I subscribe to the fact that my teacher, who who is my creator, God is always with me. So my t but that's another um story that we could get into. And of course, I digress. But mm. the point the point is made and the point is taken. And so I want us to get back to your real estate business, uh, photography business, and how did you get it all together in terms of your team members that you had to recruit in terms, you know, do you hire for scale or do you hire for, for passion or attitude? What is it? How did that look like? What did that look like in the beginning of your business? Sure. So ever since I started, I, I began with scale in mind. I've always, you know, I've always had scale in mind while growing this company, while starting this company. Um, I want, I want to make excellent real estate photography available to as many people as possible. Right. Um, so when I started hiring, um, I hired for what I needed to start, right? I waited until I couldn't work another day alone and had to absolutely have somebody else help me. Um, so, and, and since the beginning, I bootstrapped it, right? I sort of cash flowed it, right? I didn't 
funnel a bunch of money into it and then expect to grow a company from that. Right. I just sort of grew organically. Um, so I worked and, you know, I, I would go to photo shoots every day. I'd be answering the phone in the car every day on the way to the photo shoots. I'd be pulling over on the side of the road and booking appointments and, um, answering business calls on the way to photo shoots and editing at night. And, um, so then I, I realized, you know, I needed some help. Um, I trained my good friend, Will to be my first editor. Um, he actually edited out of my bedroom for the first few months, um, and that took up some of the, you know, some of the editing workload off of myself, but I still had the issue with the phone calls and with the emails and, um, you know, the, the scheduling and, and the client support. So, and my sister was in college at the time. So I, my sister Caroline, so I, I asked my sister Caroline if she wanted, you know, to work for me. And so I bought a used iMac on eBay and I set it up in her dorm room at college and sort of while I was driving to photo shoots, I would train her over the phone um, <laughs> and answer any questions that she needed while I was, you know, still out there doing photo shoots. Um, and then I hired another photographer to, to support me and to, the, you know, um, get to the photo shoots that I could not get to myself. Um, and then another and another. And then I, you know, hired more editors and I moved Caroline into an office. We had our first office space and it's sort of just grown from there. You know, you as you mentioned it, I could visually see, well, visually sold. Um, <laughs> I could visually see in my head uh, your 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 friend working out of your bedroom for those couple of months, and your your sister working in her dorm room, and you training over the phone. I you know I can I can see that picture because as somebody who has run a startup, you know, um, run a business, I understand the complexities and the where there is a will there is a way kind of a mentality that you must have in order to succeed and so i can relate to that totally now i like you know you're you're saying things that are resonating with me either through books or quotes or something because when you talked about begin with scale in mind then you know, immediately I thought of the seven habits of highly effective people, which is to one of them is to begin with the end in mind, right? So absolutely, it's very important that we have this vision as entrepreneurs, as startups, you know, whatever it is that we're starting, have a vision of where we want to go. Because if we don't know where we want to go, really, any road, any road will take us there. And so that is very clear in what you have said now you talked about the bringing together person and so on. So initially you start with those around you, those closest uh, resources to you. Now talk us through a little more when you, you know, you grew beyond those that were close to you, closest to you. And now you have to take on more people, you know, how, how difficult was that for you? And what, was it even difficult at all? Sure. So, so hiring outside of just my family and friends, <laughs> um, it, so uh, I, I got really lucky, I think, um, with the people that were put into my life. Um, I hired, as one of our first photographers, I hired um, my good friend Laura from high school. And, you know, she was excellent. Uh, she really excelled at the job. And she sort of put it out there that she was looking to do more. Um, and I just, I, something about it, you know, something about the situation, something about her told me that she would be perfect for HR and hiring people. I think, you know, she was excellent with people and just really empathetic and uh, understood people and wanted to connect to people. And I, I, I immediately saw that. So I asked her to be our first, um, HR member, our head of HR, um, and hiring. So she would help me hire anybody after that, um, and she just had something, uh, just a gift for finding great people. And we would sort of interview and bounce notes off of each other. And we, we sort of made a really good team for that. So we built the 30 people that we have now. We've built the team of 30 people that we have now uh, together. And so, and I, I know that I, I would not have been able to do that without her. She has since moved on to, uh, she got another opportunity recently. But yeah, I mean, I think that, that just played a huge, huge part in who we have now as a team. Mm, absolutely. I know you have uh, 30 people, over 30 people that you're on your team. Now, of course, we know the importance of team, but there are other elements of the business process, right? The marketing, the, the sales, the, um, the finance of the, of the business. And I still want to get into your headspace, you know, at, from the very early days. 
of what that was like, you know, so it's coming together. Now, how did you get people to start hearing about what you're doing? What did that look like? Sure. So um, to start with, I made some really good contacts and met some really great people with a couple of of larger real estate companies um, that we were able to partner with. So that was a, a huge part of our um, our growth in the in the past three years was partnering with the right companies. Um, and when I say partner, I, I just mean work as um, in a vendor relationship. I don't mean any sort of you know uh, funding partnership or anything like that. I mean purely just a working relationship and um, providing a service for them. And that that really allowed us to grow because of their scale and and working with them. Um, and up until then, you know, to supplement that as well, um, it was really word of mouth, word of mouth and, and referrals, um, grew us to what we are today. Um, so, you know, we, we've been very fortunate in that way. Very clear in what you've said is the role of partnerships and identifying the right partner for your business, whether it be financial or just someone who you can, you know, go through and, you know, they can filter through and get your clients and, and whatever it is that you're doing. So. It's very important is what I'm hearing. Partnership. We've talked about that. And I want you now to paint that picture of what it, what it looks like. I have a home, for example, that I want to be sold. What's the process like? So if you have a home that wants to, that you need to sell, if it's your home or if you're the real estate agent or if you're listing it to rent or if you're airbnb it and need visual marketing for it, um, it is as simple as taking two minutes to go to our website, visuallysold.com, entering the listing address in the front page, choosing your service, and then just entering a, a little bit of information about the home and yourself. Then you just need to pick a date and a time that works for you, and then it's booked. Um, it is really that simple. There's no back and forth waiting for appointment confirmations or any sort of um, time confirmations or, or anything like that. What you see is what you get. When you see a time and a date that works for you, you click it, you click book, and it's locked in. You, you said something, and, and, I'm, and I'm impressed, and, I, and I'd want to hire your service. But I'm in Jamaica, right? Many of my listeners will be in, in other parts of the world. If you don't have already, do you plan on getting um, into where you can subcontract uh, photographers from all over the world so that you can say, hey, there's a there's a gig in Jamaica and I want you to go to this house and I want you to take some pictures for me? Sure. So right now, all of our photographers are employees. They're not contractors. Um, and we give them all the cameras and the lenses that they need to do the, the work. So they all use the same camera. They all use the same lens. Um, so right now, um, you know, I'm working, like I said, with scale in mind, right? So I, at least, you know, my, my first mission is to, is to be in all 50 States in the U S. Um, so as far as scaling outside of the U S I think that there's definitely potential and there's definitely a model there. Um, and there's definitely a competitive space there for us. Uh, so that's absolutely not out of the question. Mm -hmm. It's just like, you just dawned on me like, you know what, because immediately I'm thinking about, because I do Airbnb and, and my pictures are horrible, if I may say those. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, but, but I never actually thought about, you know what, let's getting some person, um, a photographer to come in and do some wonderful pictures for me. But just this, this is, conversation this just sparked that interest, you know? <laughs> sure, we, we, we need to get me down to Jamaica. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> I'll take some pictures. Absolutely. We need to talk. All right. So yes, my peak performers community, you hear what we've been talking about, the importance of having, you know, uh, great pictures when you're trying to sell your business, trying to sell a home, trying to, to sell your Airbnb to get um, bookings, whatever it is. But we're talking also about the fundamentals of business itself, right? It's important that we, 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 we don't paint a picture of it's all smooth running and it's always been great because there are times when things are, you know, challenging, right? And so we need to get that out there. And as I talk about challenge, what has been for you as since you've started Business Evan, the number one um, most difficult challenge you've come across? It's learning to be a good leader. I think finding the right sales process has also been a big challenge, right? Just very frankly, very brass tacks. Mm -hmm. With my experience and, and lack thereof of having a company, every day 
has been somewhat of a, a, a struggle, but in a beneficial way of, you know, how do I manage what I'm doing? How do I lead? Um, am I doing it right? And it's more of an internal struggle and obstacle, right? Than an actual, like something that you could point at that anybody outside of the company could point at and say, that's the struggle. Um, it's really internal. And I think developing leaders as well is, is, is a struggle and, and something that we're focusing on right now. Um, because obviously, you know, with 30 people and growing, I can't be the only person that's, that people look to for, for leadership, right? Mm-hmm. So developing the leaders outside of myself, um, is, is also another, another obstacle. Mm-hmm. And your response to that really is building systems and making lists and finding the right people, looking at the people that, um, I have now, um, and finding the ones that I think could be or want to be, um, leaders and have leadership potential. Awesome. We are pretty much at the end of our conversation. I just want to give you this opportunity, Evan, to give your final thoughts and share with our listeners how they may contact you. Sure. Well, this has been great. I've very much enjoyed this. Thank you so much for having me. Um, to any of you that are listening to, listening to this that uh, are on the fence about starting something or want to start something, uh, I would just say do it. Start, take one step, and go from there. If it's not the right way, if it's not the right path, then it'll show itself as that. Um, but there's no harm in just starting and, and, and deciding to go. Um, so that said, if you want to follow me or see what I'm up to, you can find me on Instagram. I am Evan Roberts on Instagram. That's at I am Evan Roberts. Uh, and you can find my company at visually sold on Instagram. Awesome. Thank you so much, Evan. Evan Roberts, you have been inspiring. You have taken me, you've taken all of us behind the scenes of what starting your business was like. You have given us insights. You have given us things to think about. And I really appreciate your time spent with us today. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me and for the kind words. I really appreciate them. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in my peak performers for this episode with Evan Roberts. I absolutely look forward to connecting with you next week. Until next time, you can reach me at hennikawatkinsporter.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the show notes page of this episode so that you can learn how you may contribute financially to my work. Yes, it's the podcast is free, but I know sometimes you've been asking, how can I contribute? How can I contribute to what you've been doing? Well, there is a way. Just scroll to the bottom of the show notes page and you will see the link to donate now. Remember, you were born to win, but to be a winner, you must plan to win prepare to win and expect to win what good want to start your podcast but not sure where to host it go to hennikawatkisporter.com and claim your one month for hosting on blueberry or if you already have your host but aren't getting statistics on your podcast you can claim one month free stats from hennikawatkisporter.com go ahead and sign up now